Comic Mike. We're continuing our What I Love About Comics video series. What's another thing you love about comics? One of the things that I've always loved about comics since I first saw them in the 70s was Marvel Cosmic Stories. And as I grew older, I realized that it wasn't the Marvel Cosmic Stories I loved as much as the work of one creator who did them, Jim Starlin. Jim Starlin got his start at Marvel doing, you know, just a couple of fill-ins, but where he really started coming into his own was in Iron Man. A uh, couple of issues that he drew that introduced this character named Drax the Destroyer, who was out to destroy his nemesis, a Jim Starlin character and creation by the name of Thanos. From there, Starlin turned around and went into Marvel feature with the Thing and Iron Man to introduce the Blood Brothers, who were villains that were working with Thanos, uh, basically uh, flunkies, and to take over this guy, Captain Marvel for the first Thanos War. Cosmic comics that you could not believe. Captain Marvel becomes one with the cosmos, has cosmic awareness. Thanos has the cosmic cube. This war for all of reality pulls in the, uh, the Avengers, but is primarily just in Captain Marvel series. The war ends, Starlin moves on. What did he move on to? Oh, well, then he did uh, another little-known character that had been around in the Marvel Universe for a while. A guy who went by the name of Warlock. Adam Warlock. Starlin redesigned him with a more modern 70s uh, comic now looks kind of dated, but, you know, at the time was really cool, and gets uh, Warlock involved with the Church of Universal Life, um, where the bad guy who runs the church is a future version of Warlock himself. Wonderful commentary on church, religion, life in general, while being great adventure comics. At the end of that story, Warlock defeats the Magus, his future self, killing him. Which leads rise to this other guy who was the embodiment of death in the universe. Oh, uh, that would be Thanos again, coming in for the second Thanos War, which again involves the Avengers, the Thing, Spider-Man, the entire Marvel Universe in an effort to stop death from winning. Pretty trippy stuff, and very well written, very thought-provoking. Now... Starlin was not known for revisiting his uh, characters that he had done. But Marvel really wanted to start a graphic novel line. And so he agreed to do one thing. The first Marvel graphic novel. The death of Captain Marvel. So then Starlin was known for killing off characters he was famous for. At the end of the second Thanos War, Thanos is dead. Adam Warlock is dead, now Captain Marvel is dead, and we just go on from there, right? So what's he going to do? Well, he decided to go into creator-owned stuff. First with Epic's Metamorphosis Odyssey, which introduced several characters. One of them, Szyzygi Warlock, um, got his own one-shot basically graphic novel 
called The Price from Eclipse Comics. And then um, at the end of Metamorphosis Odyssey, one of the characters that was in there, Vanth Dreadstar, got the third Marvel graphic novel, Dreadstar, which then became an ongoing series for Epic for or through Epic for several years before switching over to first comics. Again, cosmic ep epics that include death, rebirth, the meaning of life, love, everything. That's what Starlin was known for. He went over to DC and he created a similar character, Mongol. The creator or the owner and uh, creator of War World, basically the Death Star that travels from world to world, destroying any heroes because that's what Mongol wants to do. He cre uh, co created Mongol with um, Len Wein. Yeah, another little name. Now, Starlin didn't do just cosmic stuff though. That's the thing, that's what he's known for, but that's not all he did. Back in his early days with Marvel, he also co-created um, The Master of Kung Fu with Steve Englehart, a friend of his. And then over at DC, he did a run on a little known character named um, Batman. Yeah, that's it. Uh, he started with The Ten Knights of the Beast, introducing the KG Beast, a KGB uh, Soviet super soldier opposing Batman ended his run two years later uh, right around the time or right after he had managed to do A Lonely Place of Dying with the death of Jason Todd. Along the way he also did um, Batman the Cult with his friend Bernie Wrightson. Um, so you know a lot of stuff in there in the 80s. Now, at the same time he was doing that, then Marvel lures him back to once more offer him cosmic stuff. So he started writing Silver Surfer because that was their cosmic book. And it went from Silver Surfer flying around in outer space, running into aliens, to Thanos is back. The return from death of Adam Warlock cosmos spanning stuff which led into the infinity gauntlet which i hear is going to be a movie might want to check it out um then you after that after that um in, infinity gauntlet it went on for a series of other books starlin is still producing stuff now uh he's done hardcore station for dc he's done kid cosmos which is a self uh, a self owned item. He, he's done breed for Malibu Comics, well at least to start off. Uh, it was later fin finished with by Image, I believe. Um, but his basic themes are always the same: love, death, heroism, sense of self. Starlin is one of the few artists that I will buy a book just for his art, while still being one of the art writers that I will buy a book just for his writing. Now, the fact that he's also worked with a, and friends with a lot of other creators that I really admire, like Steve Englehart, Walt Simonson, Howard Chaikin, Bernie Wrightson, doesn't hurt. But even if he had no association with any of those, I would still read anything by Jim Starlin. Read anything drawn by Jim Starlin, because he's one of the reasons that I love comics.